interesting oh is <laughs> when working with these tactical athletes, but some of, some of the stuff that comes up um, in the in the questions that I overheard, um, sleep on the boats, nutrition, yeah. things along these lines. What what are these guys dealing with on a daily basis? That's just, I mean, it can't be great. We're out. Everyone's out to sea. Yeah. There's well, no there's no sustainably farmed uh, <laughs> animals getting dropped off a couple thousand miles out to sea. So what? Yeah, maybe <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I think that's – you have so many challenges that are probably not that undifferent from what a lot of normal people go through as well, especially when you factor in young kids or uh, irregular schedules with work. Uh, and they're not getting consistent sleep. They're not getting s consistent nutrition. So when it comes down to treating, my philosophy on all these things are do the least amount of different. Um, so whether it handles all these things, I, I want to say, okay, what's the biggest thing we can change that requires the least amount of effort? in these situations. Now, when I'm working with a professional athlete, I, I, I take a different approach because I have a lot more liberty. We can change 20 things at once because this is what they're doing for their lifestyle. But in cases like this, I generally say, okay, well, what's not just something we can do that works? Because that's where people end up chasing their tail a lot. Uh, and this is when you get on the next thing. All right, so I'm on these 10 supplements and then I'm going to, I hear another podcast when somebody else to talk about this next thing. I'm going to go do this. And they end up trying to do 50 different things at once. And you, if you listen to enough podcasts and you list, watch, read enough blogs, You'll end up never stopping that. You're chasing something that you could get better, something that you just start taking. And I react against that pretty hard and, and say, like, that's not sustainable because what's the next thing? Uh, yeah. The analogy I give here is with golf. Uh, none of you play golf. You don't play yeah. golf. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I used to. Do you play a, golf? I was a six back in the day. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Nice. I used to play some golf in high six school. Six per hole? Oh. Yeah. I have some clients <laughs> that are huge golfers, so I feel like I golf. Okay. The amount of times yeah. I well, talk about golf. You know this in Anders. <laughs> Like, if you pay attention to, to marketing at all with golf, yeah. every single year they come out with new drivers. Got to. And every single year, this is the best driver we've ever invented. It goes 10% further. 10 extra 15 yards. 15 straighter. It's perfect. Every single year. Yeah. Right? If you go, you know, the new drivers are usually 500 to 600 bucks. Last year's model is always like 150. Yeah. So if I just buy in 2018 <laughs> to 2017, which was the greatest ever invented, yeah. it's now $100. And this is exactly what happens in a smart. So you're buying the one, and no, 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 this is the new thing now. Now it's and you're you're constantly upgrading with the supplement, the eating strategy, the sleep, the lifestyle. Well, at some point you realize like maybe that's kind of bullshit. Yeah. Like you I don't know how many years in a row of buying a seven hundred dollar drive you have to do. You until start you're to like look like ten cup with all the things all over you. <laughs> There's like these weird little hip shifting things. We're like Roddy Dangerfield in uh, <laughs> Caddyshack. Caddyshack, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the button, the button pops up. <laughs> electric mm, Goofy pants. <laughs> so it's, it's trying to say like, all right, let's try to uh, bite down on the mouthpiece, if you will, anchor our feet in the ground, and and live through this little storm of information that goes through and go, okay, what's probably the two or three things I can do at the center that will fix the most things, that's probably the biggest uh, the biggest hanging fish, if you will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like a less oh. is more. Yeah, you sometimes. Know, th th thought process. Well, way, yeah. One thing I'm curious about, um, earlier we were talking about a six on, six off, six hours of work, six hours of, of quote-unquote off time, but you have responsibilities yeah. during those off times. So if that's your schedule, if you're six hours on and six hours off, and the six hour off you have – many things to do in addition to trying to get some rest and trying to get a workout in like yeah. how, how would you manage a schedule like that and, and be able to recover and and not just be a fucking zombie all the time <sighs> i probably complain to my boss a lot <laughs> 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 terrible working conditions work this up the chain Follow some sort of lawsuit um, <laughs> demand extra compensation yeah. turns out that probably won't work Nope, nope, he says no. <laughs> he says, nope, no way. Uh, <laughs> co says <laughs> <laughs> yeah no I, th I think it would be um I'm obviously thinking on my feet right now because I've never done that personally. Mm. Uh, it's always hard to talk about things you've never actually experienced. So I always feel like a bit of a charlatan when yeah. I do that. But, I mean, I would say that... An edu educated guess about where yeah. would you start with somebody if your client came to you? The number one thing I would say is let's avoid the traps, right? Which are, we're going to figure out what works for you and what doesn't work for you. Mm. That would be the ultimate goal. Along the way, though, let's avoid the traps, which are let's not survive second by second. Let's not do, okay... I'm exhausted, so let's take more caffeine. Let's take more stimulants. Let's take, let's take more nootropics, right, just to get through the day. Mm. Because that eventually is going to lead you to – you're going to feel better. You're going to perform fit better. right? It's, you're going to be in less pain and suffering. But that eventually is going to lead you in a position that's going to be far worse. right? It's just going to make the situation work. So let's make sure we manage any of those augmentation strategies uh, so we understand when we do them, when we don't do them, and what are the potential consequences. Like Brian McKenzie and I say all the time, like there's no free passes in physiology. 
Mm. Everything comes with a consequence. And so if you have to have a nootropic to get through your day every single day, you're going to pay for that. If you have to have caffeine to wake up every day, you're going to pay for that. So mm. I would just, my first thing would be, let's be careful of getting yourself into a strategy where we're relying too much on things that we probably shouldn't have to have under less than ideal circumstances. Uh, yeah. And that would be my first strategy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's kind of the same same concept in baseball where they play a game every single day and they, they can't recover, especially if they get done with their game at 10 o'clock at night and then they go out and they party yeah. till 2 in the morning and then they're they're back to you know having to practice and then compete again the next day and it just goes on like that every single day they start off with energy drinks and yep. and you know and energy greenies. pills and greenies yeah a- anything to like get to get a little <laughs> boost in energy yeah and then inevitably what inevitably what happens is even though they have energy they're not actually recovering not even close those are those are totally different like feeling awake and actually having you know muscle joint tendon etc recovery is totally different so yep. then that's where they end up actually graduating onto steroids because the steroids help them recover when they have to perform every single day so yeah getting yourself into a trap like that where you're not sleeping as much as you possibly can different situation with the six hour on six hour off thing like that's tougher than the baseball schedule yeah as far as getting some sleep i'd imagine but but falling into the trap of trying to handle these problems with with supplements or energy drinks that type of thing is is a losing battle yeah it's the same thing along with that or an association would be adderall yeah. Right. So it's like, all right, I'm, I'm focused. So let me get on the Adderall too. That right? totally happens in baseball. Also, they they go to amphetamines before they go to steroids. Absolutely, no doubt. And the same thing. I actually, I'm working with an NFL player right now, and that's the primary. Like when I have the first conversation, it's you sit down for like an hour, and they just start dumping, <laughs> and you're like, okay, and they just oh this and this, and you know, it's like they give you everything. And you're like, you're trying to wade through everything, <laughs> and it's like, okay, oh, you're you're on eight Adderall pills a day for the last six years. Got it. Yeah. Like, now we're going to start managing that. You really need all eight. Can I have two of them? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Hook it up. It's amazing. What I'm what on guys? a Vegas vacation every day of my <laughs> life. Can we barter service for Adderall? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you that's wrong. You hand the extras to me. It'll be cool. Yeah. You should really get off those and give them to me. <laughs> I'll hold them. <laughs> uh, now, so things like that, yeah, like, those are always a problem. You're gonna, there's, there's consequences to all that. Sure. Uh, not to say that. No, that. there's no free lunch. Yeah, no free lunch. Yep. Yeah, I mean it's incredible. I mean you, uh, you'll, you'll, like you said, you'll sit down with somebody and they'll, in less than an hour, they basically just tell you almost every guilty thing that they have in their cabinet. Mm-hmm. And it, you know, usually, I mean, for even for me as a coach, it's usually it's amphetamines of some sort, yeah. right? And um, I find that they they don't feel as if they're addicted to it, and they just like jump to the next thing, you know. And they're and they're always like, oh, what do you think about this thing? And they're always bringing the next supplement to me, yeah. you know, the next the next piece of you know research that they found on intermittent fasting or whatever it is. And then like with this nootropic, so when you're when you're seeing that, what is the first way that you like take that and kind of squash that with somebody? Like how, like because everybody's psychology is different, yeah. and like that reasoning with them sometimes is. It's not about education sometimes. Yeah, I don't treat it the same with anybody. Yeah. Because uh, it, it's a very good point. I mean, I ask this question all the time. Like, are you, you think you're addicted to, to the, the Adderall? No, 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 no. I just get super foggy in my head. I can't think if I don't have it. <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> Sounds <laughs> like just an addiction. Having, yeah. <laughs> just can you function on a day without it? No, 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 not at all, but I'm not addicted. Yeah. Right. Okay, great. So there's a problem. Um, I honestly, this is what I do with every single person I've ever helped. I really genuinely try to listen. And I listen to the other things behind that as well, right? And then, like, in the NFL player's case, I won't name his name because uh, I don't love him just for his own sake. But uh, he's kind of one of these guys that's on the fringe of making a squad or not making a squad. Been in the practice squad last couple years, and if you don't know the NFL practice squad, you make a living but a not a good one. If you make a day on the active roster, like, you're 10xing your income. Yeah. Or more, probably, right? And this is now you're talking pension plan gets starting to play. And, like, your, your future is different. If you can make yeah. it on an active squad for three years, mm-hmm. then not be an active squad. Yeah, so well like what's league minimum these days? Like 250 or three? Yeah, it's probably it's like 300 grand, right? Yeah, yeah. it's 250, 300. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Last time I checked. Practice squad guys are like 50K. Yeah. Kind of depending. Oh. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. You get hit by him who's yeah. making twice as much. Like yeah. Ten times. Yeah, yeah. In well, some cases. 50 times or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and then once you're in, depending on sort of this stuff, uh, and I haven't cupped, cut up a CBA, but, you know, two or three years in the league, you're on pension the rest of your life. So it's a huge deal. And after a few years, after four or five years, you kind of get given up on. So if you haven't really made an impact, they just go like, well, if I'm going to take a chance on two players, I'll take a chance on the, on the, on the rookie and see if he develops. I've already seen four or five years of you, you're not going to develop. Mm-hmm. So there's a tremendous amount of pressure on him this year in particular 
or they're guys that are in contract years. Like, it's a lot, too, when it's like contract year. They come up, okay. And I really listen. And if they say things, and if I hear language, the direct language or the subconscious language, they're like, that's they're not going to give up the Adderall. I'm not even going to breach it. Like, I'm not even yeah. going to bring it up. If they bring it yeah. up, what do you think? Should I should I come off it? Then I'm going to have a conversation. But if it's not even like a go, 